Hey, what's going on, people? It's your boy Kelvin with Behind the Bench. Just want to give a shout out to everybody out there, social media world, wherever you may be listening. And want to give a shout out to uh, the Behind the Bench crew, uh, Jermaine, JB, and Rashad. Hope all y'all doing well. Hope y'all being blessed. And uh, let's get right to it. Uh, I want to talk about the Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, In a few weeks, we have a Hall of Fame that's happening in Massachusetts. And, you know, I believe we got Powell Gasol that's going in, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, uh, Dirk, Greg Popovich, Dwayne Wade, and some other players and coaches. Uh, I want to speak about this because this Hall of Fame issue, the way they have it set up, uh, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, The way they have it set up here is that the Hall of Fame encompasses your whole basketball career, which includes college, any international play, and NBA play. And the reason why that's confusing to me is because each level of play where you play basketball, they already have their own separate Hall of Fames. If you're a high school player, you're a great high school player, your high school, they have a Hall of Fame. Most high schools do. If not your high school, the state that you played in, they have a Hall of Fame to recognize your high school accomplishments. The college level, college basketball, they have their own Hall of Fame. FIBA, they have their own Hall of Fame to recognize all international, professional, and Olympic accomplishments. So my question is, you're here in America, the highest level of basketball here in America and in the world is the NBA. Why is your Hall of Fame not just NBA? Or why doesn't the NBA have their own Hall of Fame? Well, we we can well, we only talk about your NBA career. See, the way they have it set up now is very confusing uh, to younger fans because they most people they see Hall of Fame, they go think of just your professional career, what you did in the NBA. And really, that's the way it should be. But what is happening is the basketball hall of fame is getting watered down by players who did not have, in my opinion, NBA Hall of Fame careers. You know, maybe they were really good, pretty good in the NBA, and they were great overseas playing professionally when they were younger and their Olympics, you know, play, they were great. And they combining all that and they put them in this basketball hall of fame here in America, which doesn't make sense. Now, Tony Parker, I'm not disrespecting Tony Parker. Tony Parker was a heck of a player for the Spurs, a contributor to multiple championship teams. I think four, I believe. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if Tony Parker had a NBA Hall of Fame worthy career. You know, for me, when I think of NBA Hall of Famer, which that should be, it should say NBA. Adam Silvany set it up for NBA. A Hall of Famer is supposed to be for the elite of the elite, the special, special players. And when I mean special, I mean greatness over a sustained period of time. And to me, that sustained period of time needs to be at minimum 10 years. You know, five or six hot years, and the rest of the years you're okay, and then you had a great international career. That's blurring the lines. That's that's not a Hall of Fame. We shouldn't be talking about them as Hall of Fame here in America, where the NBA is the most dominant, you know, dominant basketball league. Yes, we know about the Olympics and FIBA and stuff like that, but we think of basketball here in America, the highest level is the NBA. And that's the way it needs to be. It needs to be an NBA Hall of Fame. Manu Ginobili, you know, he had a great international career. You know, his NBA career was really good. I understand this situation is tricky because he sacrificed numbers for the team, you know, and went to the bench and played six man. So his numbers really don't reflect on how good he was. I'm kind of 50 50 on him. Dirk. Easy Hall of Famer. Dwayne Wade, easy Hall of Famer. No problem with that. Another thing, coaches like Greg Popovich. 
coaches that are still active coaching, why are we putting them in the Hall of Fame? Can we not wait till they retire and then recognize their great coaching accomplishments, acknowledge them, and then put them in the Hall of Fame? It's very confusing. It makes no sense. Wait till Greg Popovich retires. Then put him in. They, they did Phil Jackson like that, and they've done other college coaches also. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. And another thing, it's just my opinion. You may disagree. Just because you were a key contributor on a championship team or multiple championship teams or a dynasty, that does not constitute you being a Hall of Famer. I know it may be controversial to some people, but Draymond Green, you're not a Hall of Famer, sir. I don't even know why they're talking about putting you in the Hall of Fame. Yes, you've been a key contributor to a dynasty, but you're not a Hall of Fame player. In my opinion, Klay Thompson, very good player, one of the great streak shooters, one of the great spot-up shooters. But to me, Klay Thompson is not special. Could they win without him? No, they had to have him. He's a big contributor to a dynasty. Do I believe he had a Hall of Fame? I know he's still playing. Do I believe he's a Hall of Fame NBA player? No, I do not. Some people may disagree. That's fine. My standards are a lot higher. Sustain greatness over a long period of time. Clay Thompson is not that. Great shooter. Not a Hall of Fame, NBA Hall of Famer. Not in my opinion. T-Mac. I know everybody loves T-Mac. I was a big T-Mac guy. In my opinion, T-Mac should not be in the Hall of Fame. He didn't play in college. He was great in the NBA, a great scorer for about six or seven years, seven times All-NBA, seven-time All-Star. That's a really good NBA career. He was injured, so he couldn't, you know, sustain his greatness longer. That's not enough to be a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. I know everybody liked T-Mac, including me. And also, T-Mac, no, no playoff success. None. Just a great score. Tim Hardaway. I know he got in last year. Tim Hardaway Sr. Tim Hardaway should not be in the Hall of Fame. No disrespect. I believe he was a five-time All-Star and like four or five-time All-NBA player in, in, in the NBA. And even under the criteria that they have set up where it includes your college career, he was only great in college for one year, his senior year. And he's a, he's a Hall of Famer? No. See, basketball's been watered down. It's become the Hall of Very Good instead of elite greatness. It's too many very good players that's getting put in, you know, getting thrown in because, you know, well, you know, he was a really good NBA player and he was international, yada, yada, yada. No. Tony Kukoc, great international player. Not a great NBA player. They put him in the Hall of Fame. He's already in the FIBA Hall of Fame, I believe. If he's not, he's going to be. Why are we put him in, in America? He wasn't a great American basketball player. He wasn't. In the NBA, he wasn't a great. He was not. See, it's blurring the line. It's confusing. And, you know, it's watering it down. That's one thing I respect about Major League Baseball. Their Hall of Fame is tough to get in. That 75% threshold, that is very high. And it's a lot of very good players that's not in the uh, MLB Hall of Fame, and I respect that. See, the Basketball Hall of Fame is weak, it's watered down, and they need to change it. Adam Silver, you need to make an NBA Hall of Fame. We recognize NBA career only. All the other levels already have their Hall of Fame to, you know, recognize their accomplishments on that level. Why do we have this basketball Hall of Fame set up like this? It's garbage. Just my thoughts. I'm going to let y'all go. My name is Kelvin with Behind the Bench, and I'm out.